Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's March 18th, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, shock video. The Border Patrol rips an innocent family out of their car. I'm going to see the and the leftist media claims if you support the Second Amendment, you support rape. It's the time of the season to get raped because you like to lay down. Yay, yay, yay. Plus NSA whistleblower William Benny in studio. That's coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Earlier this week, we celebrated, or at least I did in the state of Texas, open carry of your handgun. Because here in the state, there's been a lot of open carry of long guns, but, you know, they wanted to have the uh, complete constitutional carry, which isn't exactly what we have right now, but it's a step towards it. So we have even in a preliminary sense, I guess, it still has to go to our Governor Greg Abbott, open carry of the pistol. But some people say this is too much, and not only the open carry of a firearm, but also the campus carry of a firearm. And now we have leftist media outlets saying that if you support the Second Amendment, you support rape. This is a very true story. On Tuesday, Ross Story said the push to legalize campus carry by pro-gun activists is sheer blankery on so many levels. It is also a subtle form of rape denialism, whatever that means. These laws are functionally more pro-rape than anti-rape. So I guess my question is, does Ross Story think that rape began with the... Uh, invent of the firearm because rape has been along long before pistols shotguns rifles ak-47s ar-15s but now they're saying that if you support having the right to bear arms you are supporting the rapist rights to rape a woman well i support the woman's right to uh, defend herself so if she you know the five foot two 100 pound woman encounters the six seven rapist uh if she wants to pull out a you know a 38 snub and shoot the guy i have no issue with that and I took a trip to the University of Texas last year, and I was curious, you know, what people thought about rape or, you know, how this thing should be responded to. And they said, well, if there's an incident, you can run to one of the phones that's there on your screen and uh, call for help. So I, I had to rationalize this in my own mind. So I'm saying uh, to myself, if a woman is sexually assaulted, uh, you know, granted, if she survives the assault, now she has to run with torn clothing through the campus to get to one of these phones and hope that somebody can get there in a reasonable time to save her, you know, five minutes or so. Uh, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind for self-defense. And then there's always the rationale, well, if the woman has a gun, the intruder or the perpetrator can take it from her. But, you know, they want you to call on a, your cell phone if you have some type of incident. So I said, okay, let me ask you this. So you're telling me that a big, you know, six foot seven linebacker type who has the ninja skills to snatch a loaded gun out of your hand also can't take away your phone. He, for some reason, he won't be able to do that. And let me be very clear. I'm not saying everybody needs to be armed. I'm not trying to put a shotgun in every closet in America. But if you want the right uh, to, to defend yourself and you think you could do that best with a firearm or a knife or brass knuckles or whatever you think would be appropriate for you in your situation, I think you should have the right to do that. And I don't think it's at all uh, sexist or racist or whatever the buzz term is this week to own a firearm because you guys recall it was uh, I believe the LA Times just going off memory saying that uh, it's racist the racist white gun owners in America that's what's wrong with this country and that's just what they continue to uh, uh, to put out there in the media with these news articles like this now let's move on to the Border Patrol now, I had a chance to meet the Border Patrol last year went down there did several stories about how people were coming over the border and it's not a racial issue it's a border security issue because when you have open borders, anybody could come in, anybody can go out. And, you know, I don't want internal checkpoints, but, you know, if we have national borders, we should have our national sovereignty. And people say that borders are racist. It's just a big symbolism of racism. Well, if I go down to Mexico, they have a border there, too. If I go up to Canada, they have a border there, too. If I want to go to China, I'm going to get stopped in customs. And, like, what are you guys doing trying to come into our country? And I think that's perfectly fine if you do that so uh, or for them to do that. So the point I'm trying to make here is now the Border Patrol is being punished for reporting lar large groups of illegals coming into our country. Because if you go down to uh, the Mexico border and you decide to come back up, you're going to get stopped at an internal checkpoint, and they're going to ask you what your business is. That happened to me, Joe Biggs, uh, other people as well. And we filmed some of these. And uh, the guy, he says, uh, are you guys American citizens? And I say, sir, you know, I'd rather not answer that and just go on about my business. Well, well 
where were you born? You know, uh, what's in the car? I say, sir, I can assure you we are conducting no criminal activity. The only criminal activity is your unconstitutional questions. But let's go back to the article. A Border Patrol agent has testified that the Department of Homeland Security is deliberately fudging data to hoodwink the American public into believing that the border is secure when reality is it is overrun with 60% of all illegals crossing going uncaptured. And he says, I want to be crystal clear. The border is not secure, said border agent Chris Cabrera. And I do agree. You know, everybody is very concerned, or at least I'm concerned about what's coming over this border. And once again, you know, I don't want, you know, domestic checkpoints and all that, but I do think it's uh, perfectly logical to have a border checkpoint to check what's coming into your country. But, you know, not everything that they're doing down there is great. And let me preface this, because when I talk about Border Patrol, or I talk about the ATF, or I talk about the cops, or I talk about the military, I can't talk about all these agencies as a whole. It's these particular agents who are, begin, who are giving these constitutional orders from the brass up top. So when I meet the Border Patrol agent, he wants to know everything about me. When I tell him where the illegals are, I say, sir, I can draw you a map to where they are. He says, yeah, I know about those guys. I want to know about what, you're, what you have going on. So I don't have an issue with that guy himself. It's just all these orders these guys are being given. With that said, we have Border Patrol ripping an innocent family out of their car. Where are you going today? I'm sorry, sir, but I don't have to answer that question. I'm sorry? I don't have to answer that question. Can you park right there, please? For what? Can you park right there? For what? Get your hands out of my car. Okay. What is your reasonable suspicion? You one more time. Listen to me, man. Step out of the vehicle. Hey, dude, stop. I got to unbuckle my seatbelt first. Who is my husband? Dude, what are you doing? Step out of the vehicle. You're being recorded. So I you know, know. I know I am. And from domestic news to foreign news, we see a Turkish diplomat saying that Western intelligence delivered schoolgirls to ISIS. And we have the Foreign Minister of Turkey told the Daily Sabah last week, Canadian intelligence helped three British girls join ISIS. And it was later revealed that the suspect is Mohammed al-Rashid, and he was filmed helping teenagers travel to Syria. And we see a lot of this. We see uh, people coming, uh, or should I say, going from the States, going from places like Australia, and why they are doing this, I'm not exactly sure. You know, if it's the cool thing to do, if it's like the, you know, rebel against the system type of deal. But the thing they don't understand, if they are rebelling against the system, we're funding the people that you're going over there to team up with. So if you think you're going to go fight the U.S. military, you're fighting for and against uh, the United States. And I don't want to say uh, military proper because these are criminal elements at the top brass that are funding these uh, very unconstitutional and unconscionable actions. And we'll end with this before we go on to a special report from the NSA or former NSA head uh, William Binney, Elon Musk. Human-driven cars will be banned in the future. Yeah, you'll be able to tell your car, like, take me home, uh, go here, go there, anything. Uh, and it'll just do it. Yeah, okay. it's, yeah at an order of magnitude, safer than a person. Yeah, in fact, in the, in the distant future, I think it's probably going to be, if people may outlaw driving cars uh, because it's too dangerous. Like, you can't have a person driving a two-ton death machine. Earlier today, William Binney, a top official at the NSA, or formerly of the NSA, came with the Alex Jones Show to tell us all about the NSA spying and why he walked away from the agency. This is uh, Bill Binney sitting in for Alex Jones. Uh, he's given me a segment here to uh, state my concerns about uh, to, to, to you, the American public, of what I feel we, we need to do in terms of uh, combating and changing the course that our government's taken. Um, and, and from, from the... Uh, from the arguments the government puts forward, they say they're doing this for security of the people of the United States, and they're, they're doing it for terrorism to, to try to prevent it. And you have to give up your secure, your privacy for them to be able to do that. And that's just an outright lie, first of all. And secondly, what's really happening by taking in this bulk data, it's really over, overburdening their analysts in, in the NSA, CIA, all over the world. And so they can't really, they can't really stop uh, these events of terrorism, like the bombings in Boston or the shooting in Paris or in Copenhagen or the, the, the Fort Hood shooter or any of that, because their analysts are so burdened with data, they, they, they use a dictionary select type approach, which is fundamentally a Google approach. That means that uh, when they do their daily polls, they use their dictionary select and they get like a Google return. Well, that's hundreds of thousands or even a million returns. No analyst could make it through all that data in, in any day. And the next day, they get an equivalent amount. So that means they're making themselves totally dysfunctional. Uh, and that's just not true for NSA. That's also true in GCHQ and around the world because all these governments are adopting the same procedures. 
instead of taking a focused approach, which would make a, a rich environment of content to be able to manage and analyze, so that, that would make them successful. So fundamentally, they're exposing people to more, uh, more risk. Uh, they're not actually protecting you. They're, they're making it more risky for you. Uh, you're losing security because of this procedure they've adopted. So uh, the point is, uh, from my, my perspective, I keep arguing, and we've, uh, the other NSA whistleblowers and I have made suggestions on how to do this to the government, uh, but uh, the president has not adopted those techniques, and nor have any of the intelligence agencies, simply because there is too much money in this process of doing bulk acquisition of data. That, that's their motive to get to, to keep having the money flow and keep that keep that going. So um, there's uh, changing that particular procedure is rather difficult within even within government because this money comes out and goes to corporations that are in the constituent areas of the representatives and senators. So they have a vested interest in also keeping this going. So the only way to do it is to raise up as a public. We have to start standing up as Americans. Americans aren't supposed to sit back and, and let things happen and, and uh, let, uh, let government do what it does. We're supposed to be out there challenging. We have to be participating in our, in, our, in our democracy and republic. We cannot sit by and let these things happen and be quiet. If we do, we're going to get this totalitarian state that we're sliding toward right now. I mean, so that's that's really the basic issue that I have to 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 convey to you that <clears throat> you need to stand up. How could you do that? You can't sit there and say you don't have any, you you don't make you don't have any power. You really do have power, and the power is to talk to your analysts or to your uh, representatives and senators and complain to them and make sure that it's, this is a major concern to you. And when they come around to um, to give you town meetings and talk to you and get your vote, stand up and and uh, and address them and and make them publicly come out with a statement of their position on this issue. If you don't, I mean, they're going to continue doing what they, uh, conti they, they are doing right now. They, they simply say uh, they're assuming, uh, because now if you're not complaining, they're assuming that you're okay with everything they do or they, they, they feel they can do anything and the, com the country will accept it. And as long as they keep saying things um, <clears throat> and not telling the truth and exposing what's really going on, they can keep you in the dark and you'll never know. So that's why you have to get up, stand up, challenge, challenge them. I mean, after all, they're even addressing the, the, uh, the free press we're supposed to have, like with Jim Risen and Jim Rosen of the AP and various other uh, uh, reporting journalists, investigative journalists. They're, they're shutting down their sources of information and keeping them quiet. Well, that's destroying a free press. So the free press is supposed to be interrogating the government to see what they're doing so they can inform the public what the government is after and what they're really doing. Well, that's falling totally apart. I mean, look at Jim Rose in his case. They tried to they, they had him under a subpoena for any number any number of years, trying to get him to tell the source of his information in the books and things he's published. Well, under the under the press rules, he had the right to keep that the sources uh, confidential. So <clears throat> they're attempting to destroy a free press, which is the next step in in going to a totalitarian state. So if we don't stand up, uh, Americans, we're gonna we're gonna lose our country. We're gonna lose the process that we hold dear, that at least a republic we, I've had when I grew up, uh, and that uh, our, our, my father and his father before him had. I mean, we're going to lose it because we can't trust, we cannot trust the government and what they're saying. They, in fact, are, have been uh, deliberately keeping us in the dark as to what's going in and keeping a lot of Congress in the dark, too. So, so by, by doing this complaining to, to the Congress, you have at least an opportunity to change the process and the sequence of things and where it's headed. Uh, short of that, I mean, uh, it's uh, you have to fire everybody in Congress. <laughs> That's the only way to get rid of. You have to get rid of the bums because they're they're not living up to their their oath of office, which is to protect and defend the Constitution. President, of course, has the additional uh, uh, responsibility under his oath of office to preserve the Constitution. He has to preserve, protect, and defend. The others, like when I was in, in government, I had to protect and defend the Constitution. That's why I felt that what I was doing was consistent with my oath of office also consistent with being a citizen of the United States, of actively getting and participating in, in this democracy that we have, is getting up there and standing up and defending that Constitution, protecting, at least trying to protect it and defend it. Uh, that's something that our representatives in Washington are not doing, and that's something we have to call them on. We have to make sure as the citizens that we stand up and say, look, you're in office and we voted you there, and your oath of office is to do, do this to, to protect our rights and you're not doing that, and, and put them on the spot publicly.
this is the only way to do it. Sunlight is the only cure. Uh, and that's why uh, Edward Snowden has really been, uh, has really performed a, 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 a huge public service by exposing this, uh, these programs that have been uh, in place and put in place since 9-11 to spy on everybody in the United States and accumulate information on everybody. It's one thing for uh, <clears throat> companies to do it, uh, which I also disagree with. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. But it's, they're doing it for the purpose of advertising and making money. The government's doing it for the purpose of uh, finding uh, criminal activity and also being able to control the population. That's really what's happening. I mean, you could see it in the militarization of your local police and, uh, and, and, the, and the, the spread of the, uh, the De uh, Department of Homeland Security and their equipment worldwide and the buying of the bullets and so on. They're all leading to the state of uh, basically uh, being able to control the population. And that's fundamentally what I've been, that's what I testified to in, in Germany when I uh, gave testimony to the Bundestag, that the entire process that it was adopted by NSA and has been spread around the world through all the intelligence agencies is one of uh, controlling and assembling, assembling information to be able to control the population, not just in the United States, but around the world. <clears throat> so this is not just threatening us and our democracy. It's, it's a world where we're destroying democracy around the world. And in fact, they were, they we're doing such a good job that the, that the Russians and others, others what we used to call totalitarian states, are now adopting the procedures that we've implemented. And this basically tells you that, that we're on the wrong path. Our government, since uh, Dick Cheney used to, you know, say, said uh, publicly on television that we had to go to the dark side, well, that meant we went to the dark side for rendering, torture, murder, you know, uh, drone strikes, spying on everybody. All of this is the dark side. Well, uh, that's, that's, not, that's not American, and that's certainly not consistent with the founding principles of this government. Um, we, we were founded on the principles of human rights, and what, these po what the processes that are putting in place now are, in fact, taking those rights away. So the only way we can change this is to stand up. We have to get active, say something. I, I don't care what it is you say or how you say it, but get up and participate in this government. Make sure that if you oppose this move towards totalitarianism, you need to speak up and say something. You can't be quiet. You have to get out there and participate. And that's, that's really the theme of what, what, I, what I would like to say to everybody in America. And that's what uh, – that's that, that the, only, the only way now to do it is to um, – to, do, to address your representatives and senators and make sure that uh, you push that on them and keep, keep pushing that. And if they don't start uh, saying them, just tell them you're going to fire them by voting against them the next time. That will get their attention because that's really what they want to do. They want to stay in Congress and be, and be there uh, for years. And that's part of our problem. We don't have term limits, so we end up with uh, what I call petrified politicians in place <laughs> in Washington. They... They've been there for so long that it's, it's a never-ending career for them. Uh, well, when, when you do that with politicians, they tend to think over time that they know better than anybody else and that they don't have uh, – they, they, they believe that they can make the decisions that are right for the country, whether or not the public in, in, in the United States would agree or not, or even if they disagree, that doesn't matter. If their opinion says, let's go another way, then that's what they do. So that, that's where we have to stand up as a group, and it, you have to do this as a group and make sure that, uh, that the wave of a public opinion uh, hits them in a place that it hurts them, and that's at the voting booth. If you vote against them and fire them, they'll get, they'll, that will get their attention. That's the big thing that I would say. Fire the bums. Get rid of them. And I would say if, the, if, there's, a, <clears throat> if there's an incumbent list, uh, if there's a word incumbent after somebody that you're in the voting booth, I would say uh, more than likely it's better to vote against them. Like I'd said earlier, uh, the, be the best way I would see to do it is to uh, <clears throat> randomly select people from the phone book as, and, and give them every two years a chance to get in, into, uh, into office that way. I, I think about that for a minute. That would mean you get mostly people who would want to be honest. That's certainly a change from what we've got. And you get people who would like to, be, uh, <clears throat> who would like to balance a budget that's certainly new. I mean, we're going to reduce the deficit that way for sure. And you'd like to, you'd get mostly people who would like to cooperate to solve a problem. That certainly is new too. So, and uh, the other benefits, uh, think about it, the, po the political parties would be gone. You wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to do, uh, you wouldn't have to do um, uh, 
campaigns or any of that. You wouldn't have all this vested interest and in lobbyists going on. So you, 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 could end, you could end up getting all these positive effects by randomly selecting from the phone book. And politicians should realize that from us that we're saying that's a better way to do it uh, than what we've got now. So thank you very much for your time and uh, listening. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 We're here at South by Southwest. We just finished the demonstration over at McDonald's talking about GMO food. And McDonald's isn't the only one. They're just a very visible presence here. And we were very interested to find out that here at the conference, at the uh, festivities of South by, they actually had a GMO panel discussion, but maybe discussion isn't the proper word because there was an anti-GMO group that was invited to speak. And then when it came down to it, were denied access. So let's just talk to the people here at South by and see what they think about what's in their food. Excuse me, sir. What do you think about GMOs in the food? Uh, I think they're awful. I think they're awful? Yes. Any, why do you think they're awful? <laughs> I really don't know. Oh, okay. All right. Well, he thinks they're awful, so I think that's a, a start in the right direction. Yeah, you're going, you're going all the way. Uh-oh. Yes. I'm riding now. Yeah, you're rocking it. Oh. I mean, it's, it's a pretty wide topic, but, uh, you know, I've thought a lot about it. I'm not really for genetically modifying foods, but then it seems like it's more or less necessary at this point to support such a large population that we have globally. Um, I think that some of the ways that they're pursuing it, um, especially down in South America, is irresponsible. What do you think about GMOs in foods? Genetically I, modified organisms. I, I know what they are. Um, I think that I try to avoid foods with GMOs, but I'm, I'm not super vigilant about it. 
But you know, these are your children, right? Would you want your child, Would you, if you sat there and you no, watched your child. I take my kids to McDonald's yeah. and I'm totally against GMOs. Right. And I think it's, it's, I think it's crazy that they have a booth in there that's trying to talk to people. I and mean, they have all the corn growing. And, really? Yeah, we come from Monsanto land. So, I mean, I'm from Missouri. Oh, okay. So you know so, all right, about it. Right, right. They have a big McDonald's tent over there. Right. Do you guys plan to eat at that McDonald's tent? I walked over there. The line is extremely yeah. long. So maybe I'll go back when. Maybe mm -hmm. they're nuggets. Their nuggets. The nuggets. Well, Maybe did nuggets. you know that the nuggets have uh, a type of compound in it that's the same thing as find, found in uh, breast implants? Yeah, that's what kept me. I, you know that new ad that they did with the little sprinkle thing? Mm -hmm. Almost going to buy it, then I was like, mm, no. <laughs> my 11-year-old my 11 schooled me, I was like, no. In just the few minutes we've been out here asking people these questions, they seem to be very responsive to what we're telling them, and they are aware of GMOs, most of them, and will try to avoid oh, them in the future. Okay. You can find more reports on InfoWars.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. Well, here at a supermarket in Toledo, you can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and cannot be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Hey, guess what the source is for us 
to knowing about GMOs in your food. McDonald's.com! Yay! Silicone might be good for your girlfriend or wife, but it's not good when you ingest it. I'm not loving it. <laughs> now only minutes after arriving, the awesome PD showed up and swarmed around me and issued a citation for protesting with a bullhorn. Let's attack the First Amendment. Are you with them or not? No, of course not. They sell bad food. Hey, you have your ID real quick. I have this on. I'm not stripping my thing down. What do you need an ID for? Any application. Okay. Are you from Texas? Well, born and raised? Yeah. No. You have an ID out of Texas? No. What's your given name? Joe. What's his name, Joe? Biggs. What do you need this for? The yeah, IGGS? Yeah, sure. What's your birthday? Why do I have to give you that? Because you're being stopped for using the application. I'm not interfering. But it's a public sign. Can I stand right there? Thank you. Just don't block this walkway, okay? Yeah, okay. I want a cheeseburger too. What hey, I know that guy from yesterday. He pushed my guy around. What did Austin PD take? I can't use this. I can do whatever else. Did they give you a ticket for it? Yeah, okay. that's did, fine. Did they tell you that you needed to stay back away nope. from the Nope, they truck? just said I couldn't use this. So well, I'm not using it. Well, I'm telling you, you cannot block this walkway. Okay, well, then let me go in line like everyone else is doing. Uh, hey, you didn't have walkway. a badge. He doesn't have a badge. She doesn't have a badge. That's a lie! McDonald's lies! I just saw five people come out without badges. Wow! We should take this to court! Yay! <laughs> Not real food. No! Not even kind of real. No! 
Wow. But you get a free toy at the end, so it's okay. Yeah. Stop giving us fake food. Hawk, if you hate McDonald's. We still have a lot more work to do to warn people about what's really in their food that they're eating. We need more Americans to start voting with their dollars and not buy fake GMO food. We need to wake up, make sure you spread this video like a virus. Infowars.com. Well, that's it for our show tonight. If you're watching this on YouTube or some other source, consider going to prisonplanet.tv and getting yourself a free trial. You can see the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there at prisonplanet.tv. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.